Hello and welcome back to another 100% video. And yes, this is the game that almost broke the franchise. It's F1 2015. There are so many jokes and memes and glitches videos about this game, it almost broke the internet. And I'd just like to say that there is absolutely no truth in the rumour that Dave jumped on the bandwagon as well. No, no truth whatsoever. Oh my god, what's that? Oh, he's, he's been mounted. Fiat's been mounted by um, Felipe Ambassador, I do believe. I don't believe it. They're, they're still mounted. Oh my god. They're having it away. It's really quite disgusting. Behave yourselves. Uh, yeah, anyway, welcome everyone. Let's have a look first of all at multiplayer for F1 2015. Is there anyone still playing 2015 in 2021? Let's have a look at... Oh dear, um, we seem to have a problem here. I can't seem to adjust the settings. You used to be able to. Anyway, let's look for a session list and see if anyone... Oh, um, there's there's no one, lads. There's There's no one at all playing 2015 in... 2021 I wonder why I just I just I just can't imagine why not people are playing 2014 so what oh quite possibly because it's 10 shades of shite yes 10 shades of shite anyway so there we go then yes and yeah you can't adjust any of these settings so I wonder if they've actually shut down the server I, I, I don't think it was a server I think it was peer-to-peer -peer, but what it, uh, maybe it was I don't know but whatever they've done you can't adjust any of these settings at all Used to be, I'm sure you used to be able to adjust these. Well, yeah, there's arrows saying you can go left and right. So, yeah, you, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. It looks like the end for 2015, at least online. Anyway, let's go to the circuits. We start with Australia, then move on to Malaysia for the next round of the championship in 2015. Then on to China, then Bahrain, then on to Spain, then Monaco, then it's the Canadian Grand Prix, on to Austria, then Great Britain, then Hungary, then on to Belgium, then Italy, then we've got Singapore, then Japan, Russia, the USA, then we go on to Mexico, then on to Brazil, and finally to Abu Dhabi. Now, on to the drivers. We've got Mercedes Patronus with Lewis Hamilton, Sir Lulu, and Nico Rosberg. On to the next team, it's Infinity Red Bull with Daniel Ricciardo and Daniel Kvyat. On to the next team now, it's Williams Racing with Felipe Massa Baby and Valtteri Bottas. Then on to Scuderia Ferrari with Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen. On to the next team, it's McLaren Honda for the first year with Fernando Alonso and Jensen Button. Then on to Sahara Force India with Nico Hulkenberg and Sergio Perez onto the next team now it's Scuderia Toro Rosso with Max Verstappen and Carlos Sainz onto the next team now it's Lotus F1 team with Loban Glojan and Pasta Maldonado and onto Sauber with Marcus Ericsson and Felipe Nazar Wowzers. And then on to Mana Marussia F1 team with Will Stevens and Roberto Meri Ah, but it doesn't end there because this game also includes the 2014 season drivers as well. Fantastic. We start with Mercedes with Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. Our next team is Scuderia Ferrari with Fernando Alonso and Kimi Raikkonen. Then on to Lotus F1 team with Roman Glojan and Pasta Maldonado. Then on to McLaren Mercedes with Jensen Button and Kevin Magnussen. Then on to Sahara Force India with Nico Hulk and Sergio Perez. The next team, of course, was Sauber F1 team with Adrian Sutil and Esteban Gutierrez. Then on to Scuderia Toro Rosso with John Eric Verne and Daniel Kvyat. Then we move on to Williams Racing with Felipe Massa and Valtteri Bottas. Then we move on to Marussia F1 team with Jules Bianchi and Max Children. And then, of course, we've still got Caterham in 2014 with Kamui Kobayashi and Marcus Ericsson. Then on to Infinity Red Bull with Sebastian Vettel and Daniel Ricciardo bringing up the rear of the teams. Wowzers. Absolute wowzers. So a selection has been made. It is Fernando Alonso in the McLaren Honda. I had for some stupid reason thought, of course, he was still at Ferrari, which means... Oh, Fucking hell. That's what it means. Fucking hell. We're in a bloody toilet again. 
Welcome to the Austrian Grand Prix here in Spielberg. It's race day and the cars are already on the grid as the drivers complete their final preparations ahead of lights out. We're nearly ready for the start of today's race, but in the meantime, let's take a look at the grid. OK, so this will make you laugh. We're going to the race strategy screen now. And when this game first came out, a lot of people complained because on some of the tracks you actually made four stops, but it wasn't reflected on screen. Codemaster's response to this was, uh, yeah, we didn't actually have enough room to uh, fit four stops on the screen. Well done, Codemasters. Well done indeed. Anyway, it's time for the lights to go out now. We say go, go, go for the 100% race. But of course, we've got to slow down to let the back markers go past us because that's the rules. Yes, that's the bloody rules. Anyway, it's time now to say go, go, go. And as you can see, this is a typical Codemasters game because already to turn one, we got past one of the back markers. It's one of the manor cars with the Flexbot uh, sponsorship on the side part of the car, which was introduced very, very late into the F1 2015 development cycle. And of course, this was one of the key selling features for this game, live updates. But unfortunately, they spent all their time pretty much ironing out all the bugs, well, some of them anyway, that existed within this game and didn't really have any time to put any live updates in. Yes, all they did was, I think, replace a few nose cones on the car. We had the... Uh, flex spot on the side of the manor and that was basically it yes that was basically it very very disappointing considering this is one of the key features that sold this game for a lot of people in f1 2015 anyway this was of course the first next generation formula one game for the playstation 4 and the xbox whatever you want to call it i don't know but yes so of course the graphics took a huge leap from the playstation 3 well not really a huge leap but they do look very impressive indeed now fortunately because of this codemasters had to spend a huge amount of time redesigning and remaking all the tracks from scratch and in fact they made this game from the ground up they didn't copy any code over from the previous uh, iterations of formula one games so this was built right from the ground up and don't forget of course they'd only just released formula one 2014 in pretty much uh, october i do believe so they had a very very short development window and that's probably one of the reasons why this game is so shit yes so shit as we're now in 15th place at the moment let's have a look now and see what's happening just around all the uh, gauges and dials and everything that's on the screen now you can see off into the left hand corner in the top left uh, there is our position where we are in the race now you've got the mini map which once again features our car which is in yellow we've got our teammates car which is also in yellow and all the other cars are just like gray dots i would prefer if the colors were actually on the mini map but there you go there you go this still being a next generation title of course i would have thought they would have sorted that out because a lot of the earlier f1 games did actually have that feature on anyway we're chasing carlos signs now in the toro rosso car now as, as you look across to the right hand side you can see we've got like a fuel indicator now i never worked out how this worked in 2015 because it says that we're minus 44 on fuel we're in a rich fuel mix as you can see but i just couldn't work it out because it actually goes all the way down to 100 and then it goes into optimal mode uh, no it was just too much for me to work out so i never bothered i just used to make sure that it was well into the pluses before we crossed the line at the end of the race and i knew that i had plenty of fuel on board then so let's see as we now climb up the hill at the A1 ring. As I say, I'm doing this because just in case, just in case we manage to get a few tyre issues because unfortunately uh, in this track, uh, you couldn't actually finish a race because you ran out of tyres before you got to the end because this is actually a four-stop race. But unfortunately, if it does start to rain, that's going to... Uh, completely cancel that out and we won't get to see the wonderfulness of this i think it only actually happens on a 50 percent race and lower ones to be fair i think we may get away with it on a 100 percent race anyway but yes it was very very difficult to finish the race i've actually got a video in my archive somewhere that actually shows me trying to do this race at 50 percent and it just couldn't do it because we actually changed tires about six times and they basically just kept putting the same tires on every single time they were completely worn out and i ended up spinning around like a top for most of the final laps of the grass Pre. anyway we've now got past i think that was felipe nasa yes up into 13th place now for fernando alonso and of course the mclaren honda car yes the first year that mclaren repartnered with honda 
And oh my God, what a complete disaster it was for their first year back in Formula One. As we're trying to catch up to now to uh, Daniel Kvyat, Pastor Maldonado, and of course Sergio Perez as well. Yes, this car was an absolute toilet, as be said. And of course, we had the famous GP2 engine from Fernando Alonso. I don't know whether it was this year or maybe in 2016. I'm not quite sure the year there. But yes, we had the uh, GP2 engine drama and if ever you want to endear yourself to a team yes it's it's, it's comments like that that are really going to make your team get behind you <laughs> uh yes not anyway he's uh, he's now at uh, renault or alpine as it is now for 2021 i've just heard that actually his uh, new team boss has said that he's a little bit difficult to work with a little bit difficult to work with well i'm sure if uh, his boss had just asked around the paddock he would have found that out before he'd hired him anyway fernando alonso's back he'll only last another year and then he'll be gone again probably driving nascars or something in 2022 i've no idea but anyway there you go so this is now lap four of the 100 percent grand prix as we accelerate forward out to lap 7, you can see that our tyres have now gone yellow at the rear. Yes, we have a damage indicator for this game. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in percentages. It's just down to the colours, which was pretty uh, standard for the earlier F1 game. So once it starts to go uh, yellow, that means we've got a little bit of wear to the tyres. And it goes orangey, then it goes red. And oh my goodness, that, that's complete danger. And you've got a risk of the tyres exploding. Now, anything past 75% wear, which isn't actually shown in this game, but pretty much 75% wear is the... Uh, orange uh, then of course the tyres can uh, get a puncher and they did get punctures quite a lot in this game I don't know whether it was deliberate or whether it was just a glitch but yes you have to be very very careful of tyre wear as we now accelerate forward down to lap 8 and we've just gone very very wide there and Daniel Kvyat and Felipe Nazar has got past us so we've dropped two positions now down, down to 14th place Okay, so yes, there was... Oh my goodness, and Verstappen's trying to get past as well. There was a lot of bugs and glitches in this game. In fact, a lot of people actually returned this game for their money back because this was actually sold at full price. Now, if Code Bastards had sold this at half the recommended retail price, I'm sure everyone would have brought this up and just said, yeah, this is a fun game just to get us started before we get the real game next year. But unfortunately, no, Code Masters, in their wisdom, decided to sell it at full price. But there's one huge thing that's missing from this game, and that's a career mode yes we got it oh my goodness i think a car's just spun around there oh dear now of course that is a prime example of the collision detection which as you can see oh is absolutely useless to be fair though this game came out at the same time as the original project cars and that had exactly the same problem as soon as you make contact with another car your car and the other car just spin off in huge different directions and you end up crashed out into the barrier it is totally unrealistic I have no idea why they adopt that method because they did change it for 2017. Unfortunately, it was still in 2016 as well, the really crap collision detection. But in, in this game, it was just oh, it was horrible. And as you can see on lap 15 now, we are getting overtaken by cars because the game just can't seem to work out what to do in a lot of the races. The AI seems to be all over the place. It actually reminds me a little bit of Formula 1 98, the way the AI are very, very erratic in their behaviour. Anyway, it's lap 15 now. You can see that we've got orange on the red. Oh, and there's an example of the erratic behaviour. There you go. Let's go to a replay and see exactly what happened there. I'm just going along, minding my own business, not making any contact with any of the cars, as you can see now. Yes, no problem there whatsoever. And just watch this, everyone. We're going to get a car up the Jack Jones. He's just going to push us off. I'm sure that's what's going to happen. So, yeah, yeah, take that line perfect. So there we go. We're going in a completely straight line. And yes, look at that. Wowzers. Unbelievable. The cars, the AI cars, just cannot see you. They just can't see you whatsoever. And they end up just punting you straight off. This is one of the other frustrations about this game, which really, really annoyed me and got up my Jack Jones. It really did, because it's just stupid that it happens like that. They shouldn't actually sort of take you out on a straight. I mean, you know, but as I say, they just can't see you. And this reminds me of Formula 1 2001, if you can remember all the way back to the PlayStation 2 days. That is exactly the same problem. Their cars couldn't actually see you and ended up barging you off the circuit in some instances you could actually feel this surge of the car behind you and it was pushing 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 you in the rear until it pushed you off the track yes it was really really crap and i'm all these years later i was now oh god here we go again here we go again lads i've been punted off again for no bloody reason let's go back and have a look and see what's happening here 
I think that was Felipe Massa. I'm not quite sure. I think it was Massa. So we go to the outside camera view. Chase view. Yeah, it is Massa. And look, it just... Uh, I wasn't doing a thing there. I wasn't doing a bloody thing. And I get punted off. Wowzers. Absolute wowzers. So this was, the, um, yes, the first next generation game from Codebasters. And this was basically the best they could come up with. It was just absolutely terrible. It really was. Uh, but one of the things that was missing, in fact, the main thing that was missing from the game was that there was no career mode. They just didn't have enough time to implement a career mode. So it's completely gone. So all you've got is a, I think it's 19 or 20 race season. You get to the end and that's it. Anyway, we're coming in now for our first pit stop of this Grand Prix. And you can see now the beautiful... Uh, cockpit view as we come in for our stop we're going to have all the mechanics now changing our tyres hopefully we're going to get a fresh set because it's not uh, it's not for definite in this game but yes we get a fresh set of tyres and out we come now we rejoin in 19th place the pit stops are pretty decent I have to say pretty decent but uh, yes so you, we rejoin now on lap 17 in 18th position at the moment so yes this was sort of premium quality from Code Masters in 2015 they completely removed the uh, career mode as we've now got blue flags blue flags everyone blue flags as Lewis Hamilton the blessed one goes past us yes and we've got Nico Rosberg as well let's get out of the way so he can get past go on Nico go on yep lovely so only 17 laps into the Grand Prix and already our McLaren Honda has been blue flagged yes it's been blue flagged but that's pretty pretty uh, pretty uh, usual I would say for this uh, car anyway lap 18 now as Rosberg puts in the fastest lap and we are now behind our teammate Jensen Button let's see if we can dive that inside of him yes we can unfortunately the AI seem to offer no resistance when you actually put them under pressure they just they just cave in and let you pass unbelievable the uh, difficulty is well it's not that difficult I have to say if you're in a car like this it is pretty uh, difficult but if you're in like a Ferrari a Red Bull or a Mercedes the game is pretty easy and you can pretty much win a season quite uh, comfortably uh, in this game as we now go very very wide and uh, wait a minute that was Carlos Sainz how's he got past us oh because oh I got, now this is the thing that I can never the blue flag system is completely broken in this game well pretty much everything is broken in this game but yeah blue flags are broken as well because uh, other cars actually slow down and then you can over we overtake oh it's just it's just a fucking mess the whole thing is a mess I mean I've done races in this game where the yellow flag has just been basically constantly out for the whole of the race it's just blinks on and off like a bloody Belisha beacon it really does it's just absolutely crap absolute crap and a lot of people when they look oh we got some debris on the circuit oh lots of debris what's going on it's Sebastian Vettel what's happening here and Pastor Maldonado I think Vettel may have gone into the back of Maldonado let's go to a replay and see exactly what happened wowzers excitement finally excitement so here we are. There's Pastor Maldonado. Uh, what's going on? Uh, I can't quite see. Let's go to the outside. Oh, look at that. There was contact. And Pastor Maldonado had a puncher. I think he was going slowly. And then I think uh, Sebastian Vettel actually went straight into the back of him. Yes, he did. Sebastian Vettel. Now, of course, the AI obviously can't see each other either. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, Sebastian Vettel smacked straight into the back of Pastor Maldonado. Fantastic. Anyway, what is Vettel doing? Get out of the way, Vettel, you sponge. Lap 21, everyone. Lap 21 of the Torture Grand Prix. We're still in 15th place. We've had cars overtaking us. I've got absolutely no bloody idea what's going on in this race now. I really haven't. I've got... No, what's going on now? We've got cars coming in. We've got cars slowing down. We've got cars speeding up again. Oh, God. Yes. Lap 21. Lap 21. Uh, now in 13th position for Fernando Alonso in the F1 2015 Torture Grand Prix. If this game lasts until the end of the race at 100%, I, well, I should be very, very much surprised. Very much surprised indeed as we accelerate forward out of lap 24. We've got Boo Fags again, everyone. Boo Fags. I don't know who it is trying to get past us this time, but it's someone. As we now pull off to the right-hand side to let the car go past. And it's going to be... It's uh, it's Felipe Massa. And now you can see the car behind us. He's slowing down as well. Collar signs. Yes, fantastic. Well, come on, Felipe. Go past us then. Felipe. Felipe. Oh, God, he slowed right down. I don't believe it. Look at that. Blue flags and he slows right down. This is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. 
Anyway, you can also see the skies are starting to darken on lap 25. Starting to darken, so I think it could rain as we accelerate forward on lap 28. And yes, it is starting to rain. Now, the weather effects were pretty much praised in this game. The rain effects are pretty decent, has to be said. A little bit of an improvement over uh, the previous game. So, yeah. Full bars to co bars there. Uh, they couldn't get anything else right, but the weather is pretty much on point. Yes, well done. Well done indeed. Anyway, so we're coming in now to change on to the intermediate tyres. And unfortunately, this means that we aren't going to get to test whether we run out of tyres before the end of the Grand Prix. But there you go. And so we come in now for the Inters. Lap 29. There's our lads. Inters go on. Thank you, lads. Little tweak at the downforce as well. I think I've increased that a little tiny bit. And we're going to rejoin in 16th position, I do believe. Now, we might get the full uh, cycle of tyres in this game because if it goes onto full wet, then back to inters, then back to dries again, we may get the full F1 experience. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, lap 29, and we are now behind Will Stevens in the Manor car. Yes, Mr. Cash himself in 2015. Let's see if we can get past him. Of course, he's still going to be on the dry tyres at the moment. He hasn't come in for his stop. And yes, you can see the uh, tyres on the side. Now, fortunately, in this game, there was no indicators on the uh, screen to tell you what tyres the other teams were on. Yes, uh, obviously now in 2020 we've got all those indicators to tell you, but not in 2015. So you have no clue unless you actually get up to the car in front of you to find out exactly what tyres they have got on the car. There's no actual weather indication either, uh, whether it's going to start, you know, raining towards the end of the race or whatever. That does, no, there's nothing like that here either, no. Well done, co bastards. Well done. Indeed. You can tell that I just love this game, can't you? Yeah, I tell you, I was so disappointed in this game. It was unbelievable. I actually turned to Project Cars because I was just dismayed at how many bugs and glitches there were in this game. Yes, I went to Project Cars for about a year and completely forgot about this game because it was just a complete disaster. Anyway, lap 32. Now, you can see it is really raining and we're going to go through some of the other camera views. You've got the offset T-cam view, as you can see, which a lot of people do love. A lot of people do love. Unfortunately, though, there is no adjustable options in this game, so you can't actually move the camera around like you can in the later games. There are fixed positions. So there is the chase cab. Now, one of the other stupid things was that uh, sort of exhaust flaring, so the sort of um, heat haze coming out the back of the car. Now, surely in wet conditions, you wouldn't see that whatsoever, would you? Surely not. Why would you see a heat haze when the uh, weather is so damp? That, that wouldn't it? But no, it's on all the time. And even when the cars are sitting on the grid, uh, you can see that heat haze, which no, no I, I just don't see how that would work. No, even when the cars retire, you've still got that heat haze coming out the back. I don't know why Cobasters Incorporate, they, they did actually get rid of that. I think after 20, probably after this game, in fact, or maybe 2016 anyway, they got rid of that heat haze at the back because it was just a pretty stupid effect, to be honest, because, yeah, you just wouldn't see it, especially in rainy conditions. Anyway, lap 32, just going through some more views. There's the nose cam view, and there is the gorgeous cockpit view, which does feature fully working rear view mirrors, as you can see. And I have to say, it's a bit of a step up from the previous F1 games. Uh, it's very, very decent indeed. You've got the steering wheel. Now, of course, a lot of people complained about the steering wheel in this game, the fact that it does have a lot of steering movement when you go from lock to lock. And we can just see here that, uh, yes, there is, there is a lot of movement in that wheel, it has to be said, but... Uh, who knows, maybe that was realistic, or maybe it wasn't, because nothing else was in this game. <laughs> okay, let's see what Wiki says. The game runs on an all-new version of the Ego game engine, providing a large number of improvements to the game's physics models. It features an all-new Pro Season mode, which was crap, and that is more challenging than normal gameplay because there is no HUD and no assist, which includes traction, ABS and transmission, with the hardest level possible. The game is also compatible with the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One's voice recognition software, allowing players to talk to their race engineers during the race and ask for race information, weather updates and tyre status, and even request a change of tyres or wing. The game was also noted for the fact that the AI would often wreck or make mistakes. This drew both praise and criticism from game critics. Now, of course, yes, this is one of the first games, or is the first game, to feature Jeff the Engineer. Yes, that useless twaddle monkey who absolutely gives you the wrong information during the races. We now change onto the wet tyres because it is now absolutely pissing down with rain. You can see the rain effects as they're bouncing on the uh, front part of the uh, McLaren car there. Absolutely beautiful. But yes, Jeff is, for the first time, featured in this game. He is, well, he's just an absolute twaddle merchant because you just... 
you just don't trust any of the information he gives you. It's completely wrong, and he often waffles at you as you're driving along for no reason whatsoever, and it's best just to tell him to shut up as soon as possible, because, yes, he's just absolutely useless. Don't ever listen to Jeff. Don't ever listen to Jeff as we're trying to get past Sebastian Vettel there, and we're holding on at the moment, though, to 13th place. Yes, 13th place for Fernando Alonso on lap 35. That means uh, we've... We haven't even reached half distance. Anyway, we accelerate for lap 40. We've got boo fags, everyone. Boo fags again. Car's going past us. It's the honey badger now. Yes, the honey badger. As you can tell, I'm already fed up with this game after 40 laps. <laughs> and I've still got another 30 to do. Bastards. Anyway, it has started to clear up a little bit. So we're now going to change back onto the intermediate tyres. Now, of course, one of the other problems with this game was that if you looked on the, some of the replay cameras, you could see that the tyres that the crew were just about to put on here actually ended up on the track. Yes. Not, you didn't actually drive... Well, sometimes you did actually see them on the track when you were driving about, but most of the times you couldn't. But in the replay cameras, you could see the tyres were sort of left on the circuit so, at some point. It was just absolutely ridiculous. Yes. So the replays were broken as well as pretty much everything else about this game. As I say, it almost, almost destroyed the franchise, but thankfully I did put it together for 2016, and that was a vastly improved game on this one, but it was still built on the foundations of this game as we're trying to get past uh, Jensen Button, our teammate. Now we dive dead inside on lap 42, oh, we go very, very wide on the exit because, of course, we're in the rainy conditions, and Jensen Button manages to get the place back again. Bugger, 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 bugger. So let's see if we can get past our teammate because we want to see if we can actually uh, finish the race ahead of our fellow McLaren Honda pilot. And we do get past this time. So yes, up at the 13th place now on lap 42 for Fernando Alonso. As we accelerate forward out of lap 44, still holding on to the 13th place. We've got Rosberg, the leader, currently just ahead of us, as you can see. But we're going to come in now for a change of tyres. We're going to go on to uh, some uh, dry tyres, because in fact, in this game, you could still pit while it was still raining for dry tyres, which didn't actually make much sense at all, but we'll just run with it. We'll just run with it. So here we go, on to the dry tyres now. Yes, we're going for the harder tyres. We're still going to have to stop again. Yes, I know, I know. We're still going to have to stop again because these tyres really don't last much longer than about 10 laps. And I'm pretty sure in real Formula 1, the tyres lasted a lot longer than they did in this game. But as everything else was broken, it was pretty obvious that uh, wear on the tyres was also going to be broken as well. As we just go past a little bit of debris there, a little bit of debris. Anyway, we accelerate forward on lap 56. And as you can see, the tyres have now sort of reached the end of their cliff. We've got Jeff whittering in my ear roll saying we've got to stop for another pit stop anyway. So this is going to be the last stop. Hopefully, I'm not quite sure though. We might have to stop again. I'm not, I, don't, I just don't get it with this game. Anyway, so on we go, back onto another set of drives, and now you can say, what the but no! Why have you put inches on the car? No, oh God. Oh my God. They've put intermediate tyres on, and look, the sun's shining, there's no rain whatsoever, and yet they put inches on the car. I don't believe it. I came in previously for a set of dry tyres. Would you not think that that would now be default to dry tyres then if I'd already put a set on? Would you? No? No, of course not, because this, everyone, is F1 2015. So next lap has now completed and we're now going to come in, finally, for another set of dry tyres. Hopefully, hopefully, now the team are going to put these dries on and not inters. For cock's sake. So here we go, on to the uh, harder tyre now. Thank you very much, lads. And it is another new set. Wow, this game is almost running perfectly. <laughs> As we rejoin now in 17th position after that cock up in the pit stops. Yes, 17th place for Fernando Alonso, which is pretty much how he finished in 2015, I, I do declare. Anyway, we're excited for lap 67. We're trying to get past Jensen Button, and we do manage to do those. Yes, we do. So up now into, uh, oh, wait a minute, though. Jensen Button's just re-overtaken us. And we've got blue flag. So I think Jensen's now going to have to slow down for the car behind any second now. Let's see what happens. We're going to see if we can dive down the inside of Jensen. Can we? Can we? Can we? Uh, no, we can't. But he's going to have to stop. And then we're going to use that opportunity to get past him. Now watch this. Watch this. So we've got a Ferrari behind us. I think that's Kimi Raikkonen. Yes, so he has to slow down, and Jensen Button slows down, and we overtake the position. Now we're going to overtake Raikkonen as well. Oh, fuck it now, and he takes us out. Fuck's sake. Don't believe it. 
Anyway, lap 68, everyone. Lap 68. More boo fags. More boo fags. Oh, we get a five second time penalty for not. I think actually this is the last lap of the race. I think it is. I think we're going to cross the line and it's going to be over. Thank God for that. 68 torturous laps. And Nico Rosberg wins the race and we cross the line. Yes. Fantastic. Well done, Codemasters. Well done. And to think I bought a PlayStation 4 just to play this game. I put it in my machine. And 10 minutes later, I literally threw the fucking thing at the wall. Not, the, not my PlayStation 4, this game disc. Yes, because 2015, all games were still on disc, don't you know? Yes, not like now. No. So we ended up in 17th place. Yes, with a five-second penalty. Just behind Jensen Button. Great. Absolutely great. Anyway, it's time now for the Monaco test. Now, what is the collision data? Oh, it's going to be crap, isn't it? Let's have a look as we go into Sandoval. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, we got some confetti, though. We have got some confetti. Let's have a look at the replay and see what happened there. So we get off the line pretty decently at Monaco. Just going up into Sandoval. And oh, well, that looked a little bit flat to me. I, that, I mean, there was no sort of bounce to the car. Where, oh, and we got another one. And the wheels come off now. Yes, we've taken the wheel off and the one off Rosberg. Oh, look at that. And that's, that just didn't seem right. Once again, didn't seem right. Let's see if we can take out the... Oh, yes. Oh, well, we got it up in the air, but we didn't manage to flip him. I think that's the best we can pretty much hope for in this game, to be honest. I don't think we... Oh, look at this. We made Nico Rosberg disappear into the wall. He's completely disappeared. Wowzers. Anyway, that's the end of our journey on F1 2015. Thank God. Thank God for that. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. You've been awesome, as always. And I will leave you with the credits from the genius that is Mr. Mark TDK Knight, who managed in the end credits to actually get a remix of the Knight Rider song. Listen out for it. You'll hear it just in the background for a little part of the uh, song. And it's quite possibly the best thing about F1 2015. Yes, the end credits. Thanks, everyone. And I'll see you in the next video.